Hi, I'm Lise Kaluji. I'm one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. And today, this short video is about six ways a narcissist will manipulate you. There are more than six, but we're just going to do six today. So um, if that sounds good, hit subscribe and we'll get started. Six ways a narcissist manipulates. Number one, gaslighting. Gaslighting is when they make you question your beliefs, your sanity, your thoughts, your experience, your emotions through manipulating you by twisting your words, by blatant denial of a situation, blatant denial of a behavior. They will deny things. They will lie. They will use what you love against you and twist things around. They will confuse matters. They will throw in word salad, which is basically just talking and rambling on and on about things that are unrelated and circle back and circle around a topic without actually talking about the subject itself. Anything to avoid the topic, anything to de derail you from what you're thinking, talking, or needing to talk about or believe. So that in a nutshell is the gaslighting. Okay. Um, and that number two way that a narcissist may manipulate is the devaluing. When they are devaluing, what they've done before the devaluing is they've built you up. They built you up, put you on a pedestal, love bombed you, created a situation where you feel safe and you trust them, and then they pull the rug out from under you. They devalue you, they may name call, they may covertly um, devalue by just making you feel like you're just not enough. Like Everything that you thought you believed that they felt about you isn't really true. They make you question the relationship and question your safety and your security within that relationship. They will name call. They will, not all of them name call, but often, sometimes it's more covert in a, just a, you know, a look of where they just seem to like not actually approve of you. So you may feel like you're constantly seeking their approval. That could be a form of devaluing. Um, anything that takes the value that you felt you had in that relationship and destroys it. That is what they do. And they do this in order to maintain power. All of these uh, behaviors are for them to have control and power in the situation so that they can maintain the illusion of what they think they are and that they want you to believe that they are. All right which is which is the you know perfect and most wonderful human being on the planet so okay number three they use others to manipulate they triangulate they have flying monkeys they will draw others into the situation so that either that person in a triangulation situation that third person becomes um either someone to someone to prove a point someone to make the point about what the narcissist believes or is or is believing wanting you to believe is the truth so they'll pull that other person in in order to um, create drama in order to control and manipulate you and often the other person so often both other people are being manipulated in the triangulation most of the time and quite often the third person is un, un, unknowing that they are even in a situation where they're being triangulated in all right. Um, and when they use flying monkeys, a lot of times the flying monkeys don't know that they are out there seeking information, feeding information, um, saying things that are for the narcissist's benefit. They're just, they just think they're being a friend or a family member. So anytime someone comes to you with anything about a narcissist, you say, thank you. I don't, I don't need to talk about that subject right now. I don't need to talk about that person right now. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You know, just don't feed information back into flying monkeys and do your best to stay out of situations where you are being triangulated and pulled in. You're a third person in a situation or you see a third person being pulled into your situation with a narcissist. Step out. Gray rocket. All right. Um, number four. They often play the victim. And they will use playing the victim to manipulate you. So suddenly it's all about them and their and their and how the hurt they are and how you know life is hard for them. And we as empathic people tend to have empathy for this and start to see, oh, they really are just a wounded person that just needs help. Oh, we need to, 
you know, they've had a really hard life. I can see why they are. So basically it creates justification for us in justifying their toxic behavior. And that is what we need to avoid. We need to see them for what they are. Adults who need to be responsible for their own emotional well-being and their own emotional manifestations and behaviors. And we need to stop uh, being taking on the accountability for them that they should be taking themselves. And when they're playing victim, what they're doing is pushing that accountability onto you. All right. Number five, projecting. Projecting. They say that you're doing something when in fact it's the thing that they're doing. They say that you believe or feel something when in fact it's the thing they believe or feel. And they do this. It's sort of, I see this as an I know you are, but what am I kind of situation or a, a finger pointing so that you don't get caught. Sort of like if you, if you uh, stole all the cookies from the cookie jar and then you point the blame before the blame's placed on you. Basically, they're just placing blame before the blame's placed back on them. They don't want to be accountable. They can't be accountable and they won't make changes and they have no empathy. So they're going to push the blame before they know they're guilty. They're going to push the blame before they're accused. And that is the reason for projecting. And that is a reason for projecting. And that is what they do. So, um, yeah. Okay. And number six, boundary violation. Narcissists will manipulate by pushing your boundaries. They don't always push them really hard and really fast. Sometimes they nudge them little by little by little till almost every survivor says, I was doing things I never would have done. And not in a good way. I was doing things. I was breaking my own moral code. I, was, I did things that I know I shouldn't have done. And now I look back and I feel shame and I wish I hadn't done those things. So many people say this. They say they need to forgive themselves for the things they did in the narciss in when they were within the relationship because it's things they never would have done. Often it's things that come out in the form of reactive abuse back toward the narcissist, and they think, I I don't scream at people. Why was I screaming at that person? I shouldn't have done that. It's my fault too. You see, when they push when they push boundaries, not only can they get you to do what they want and be uh you know, follow them into the situations they want to be in, but it can get you to doubt yourself, to question your own strength, to, to, to not feel that you have any will of your own. And it can get you to, um, it can get you to have so much shame that you're at their mercy to give them. It's basically, if you have a low self-esteem and if you have a bunch of shame about yourself, and if you are feeling extremely negative about yourself, they can build you up with one crumb. That's all it takes. If you have a high self-esteem and if you have a lot of value in yourself and you know your worth and you let your light shine, sure, they want that light and they'll take it for a while. But have, that's too much to maintain. That's a lot of work. That means that the love bombing has to be pretty darn good in order for you to feel it matches what you're worth, right? If you have no self-esteem and very low thoughts about yourself and a lot of self-hatred and um, your vulnerabilities are with, mixed up within that, then it only takes a little bit to be built up. You may not believe the buildup, but with enough of the intermittent reinforcement, we get confused, we get trauma bonded, and we are trapped in that for a while. All right, so it's all about control, you guys. They're trying to, they're trying to control the world around them, and they're trying to maintain the supply they have with control. They need the power, they need the control in the relationship. And that is not a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship is based on balance in both parties, being individuals and sharing the responsibility and the accountability for one's own behaviors. In other words, you share the responsibility for the relationship and each person in a healthy relationship has accountability for their own emotional life and their own behaviors. So that can happen with a narcissist and they use these six ways to control you and to manipulate the situation and to maintain their supply so that they got you right where they want you. Okay. So understand that and they're, uh, you know, get away, <laughs> get out. For more info on any of the points that I talked about here, check out the videos. I have videos on almost every single one of these topics that go on for an hour. So you can have lots of information there. And there's also information on all kinds of other things for healing and abuse on this channel. So check them out. And I will see you guys next time. You take care. Bye-bye.